are honored to uh, be joined by the, the $50,000 uh, Rustbury winner for Making a Difference, uh, Chief um, Vincent Mann, who, uh, by the way, you were the last person introduced when I was standing up there. And I knew, because I had the script, you did not know that you were the final $50,000 winner. You didn't know, did you? No, absolutely not. Uh, truly an honor and an uh, amazing thing. You know, uh, to be honored to be an unsung hero, uh, knowing that, you know, the lives that have been lost um, in my community and, uh, you know, what we're standing up for to fight for and protecting the water for four million people, uh, it is a shock. You know, and uh, it's my hope that this will continue uh, to grow, and I expect that I will be a, a, an advocate supporter of the Russ Barry Foundation, uh, continue being a supporter of Ramapo College as well. So, we're about to see a video in just a few moments um, that tells that Danny, um, excuse me, that uh, Vince talks about his own. I just talked to Danny, one of our other winners, but the chief um, actually tells the story, a very powerful story. But real quick, Chief, tell us a little bit about your tribe, your people, and why we need to understand them. Um, I am the Turtle Clan uh, Chief of the Ramapo Lenape Nation. We are the descendants of the Muncie, which was also a clan of the Lenape as a whole. Um, what's important to know is the history of the Ramapo and everything we've been involved with from, you know, the 900 cannonballs to uh, the steel from the Ringwood Mines, right, uh, that was used in every war from the Revolutionary War to World War I, uh, chain across the Hudson, the steel that holds the dome over the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., came from the mines that are now polluted uh, by all these toxins. And so what people need to understand is that all the myths and stories that they've heard about the Ramapo Lenape Nation and the Ramapo people are, are our false. You know, we are the ones who are standing up in the, in the middle of the Ramapo Mountains along with Ramapo Conservancy, Ramapo College, fighting for the protection of millions of the New Jerseyans, you know, and uh, to, protect the, to protect the water for them as well. Let's do this. Let's take a look at the uh, video from Chief Mann that he talks about. Um, it's, it's one thing to hear him talk, but you see the beauty of the land around him that uh, tells a powerful story, and then we'll come back and talk to the chief. Let's take a look. Even as a state-recognized tribe, there's been no federally recognized tribe that's ever become a, per a condition of the permit on the federal level to be monitors on a pipeline. We won that right, you know. We had the pipeline stopped. Um, my name is Chief Vincent Mann. I am the Turtle Clan Chief of the Ramapo Lenape Nation. What I'm doing right now is I'm actively taking a larger role at, at the CAG, which is a citizens uh, advisory group. Um, where the EPA is supposed to come in and give us information in a way that we could all understand it. We're making strides to protect the water, uh, protect ourselves. Uh, I think that we're the only people who actually live within a Superfund site. You know, you get tired of making that long drive to, to go to a funeral. I felt compelled, um, and I have to say that it was because of the Creator, you know, showing me, you know, that I needed to come back home. So I tried to involve myself talking with the students, uh, working on projects together where we hired the students. But when you find yourself in a position that tribal members and outside people from the, you know, the outside community start to look at you and start to see the things that you're doing and the accomplishments you're having, and they come behind you, you know, for me, you know, I've regrettably have let people down in my life, and uh, part of that was coming back home. But I understand now that those people are relying on me um, to continue to pick up where others have left off because they became too sick. So I don't do it out of selflessness that I would tend to step up and continue going to help you. I do it because it is the right thing to do, because I'm a human. I think it's up to us as humans to pass that on to other humans and other people who have had bad experiences in their life to, to try to help them to see the good in the world or that they can make that difference. You know, outside of the fact that I'm a human, um, I'm Native American. I tend to do things that most people have to think about. You know, If you were on the side of the road with a flat tire, I don't think, and I would stop and help you. I will be quite honest with you that the uh, monetary 
value of it to me. Yes, it will mean something, but it doesn't really hold any weight to the fact that I am actually being recognized as who I am, you know, for my efforts that I put forth in trying to make this place a better world, not just for Ramapos or the Turtle Clan, but for the larger community. Chief, let me ask you, after everyone just saw what they did, what's the one thing you want people to take away from that video? Uh, <laughs> what's that message? That message is uh, really, it's about what I spoke about after uh, finding out that I won. It's about humility. What do you mean humility? Why, why humility? Humility um, means that, you know, when you take a look at somebody else, you know, you should be looking at them as if you're looking at yourself, that you're looking in that mirror, and that, you know, not, not one thing is, is, is uh, better than you, you know, not a blade of grass, you know, not a bird. Uh, it was in a week ago I stopped in the middle of the road and rescued a hawk, you know, and, uh, you know, along our journey in life, because of our experiences, some of them are very tragic, you know, we lose what we're born with, which is humility, right? When I mean, we can't take care of ourselves, we're relying on other people to do that for us. And through life and through those tragic experiences, you know, or arguments and things like that, we, we lose that humility. We lose that humanness about us. And we become what I say is people, right? When you go to New York City, it's people walking down the street. And it should be Devil's, Devil's advocate, Chief, but don't you need ego and, and a degree of, I don't know if it's arrogance or assertiveness to, to fight the fight you're fighting, to, to go to congressional committees, to get people to move. Isn't is ego, no? No. no. It's not, is it? No, it's not. If I could take it out of here, I would show you. It's my heart, right? That's what it is. I used to wear it on my shoulder. You know, as a kid, I was ridiculed and laughed at and, you know, bullied. And so uh, one of the honor... You were? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, one of the honorees that was here uh, today, you know, their, their child committed... Tyler Clemente's parents. Yes, sir. That's why I stood up. You know, I know what that is. Our kids continually battle that every single day. You know, the fight of the Ramapo is the fight of every American, you know. And just for us, it's a little added thing on there because we still have to maintain our cultural identity, you know, and to live in two different worlds, you know, 39 miles off, outside of New York City, you know. Um, so you don't need that. You need to have heart, you need to have understanding, you need to be able to cry, show your emotion, show that you're a human, you know, show that you have that humility in you, right? You know, and through the course of life, people find that humility when their son is trying to set on them. You know, that's when, they, when they're sorry for, you know, the argument, not talking to their brother for a long time, or if it's their children or their parents or a friend, you know, and they find that humility again. And um, sometimes people don't find that out until it's too late. And I'm just honored enough to be recognized for finding my humility again. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor, the New Jersey Chamber of Commerce, ADP, the Fidelco Group, Cone Resnick, MagnaCare, and by New Jersey Council of County Colleges. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.